We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out tonight for the meeting, brave the cold, to come out and be with us. And I uh, also would like to uh, welcome those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. Uh, we're going to begin th the night's meeting by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Jerry Bittner, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As always, we pause to give you thanks, to give you thanks for this day, to give you thanks for this city in which we live, and for your presence in our lives. You have gifted each of us with the beginning of a brand new year. We pray that this year we would commit ourselves to be of service to others and to be of service to you. And we pray that our service will always be acceptable in your sight. As always, we pray for our military members serving us around the world. Especially tonight, we remember those brave souls, the 12 who went down in the helicopter crash in Hawaii. We pray for their families, that your presence would especially be with them. Keep all of our military members safe and be with their anxious families. And as always, be with our mayor and with our council. Give them your guidance and your direction. For all this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Council, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all fa in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I'm going to come down and do a couple of um, presentations right now. Regularly, the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee recognizes behaviors and activities that advance the city's clean and green uh, goals. Each recognition will focus on areas that are identified by the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee as work tasks for awareness and capacity building. Uh, the Home Holiday Decorating Contest is an initiative of the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee to encourage city residents to show off their community pride and light up the city during this special holiday season. It is also meant to be a fun family activity. This evening we see two perfect examples of families having fun. During October, November and December, the committee asked the public to submit nominations for their own or someone else's decorating for Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas. On the screens, you'll see uh, two of the nominees for Halloween, and we commend these efforts. Okay, wow. Spooky. <laughs> I want to now call forward uh, Robert. Uh, Rox, Roxasano and his uh, family, their family consists of Robert, his wife Nicole, and children Rocco, Giuliana, and Amelia, Ashlyn, and Alyssa. We're going to present, uh, present this award to you. Uh, this, uh, we're going to thank you for your uh, effort to enhance the holiday spirit. 
And it was spooky. It's really neat. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, the uh, Clean Green Jacksonville Star Award. The Clean Green Jacksonville North Carolina Star Award Holiday Residential Decorating Award is presented to Robert Roberto Asano. Family for exceptional holiday decorating efforts at their home, which benefits the Clean and Green, Clean and Green Jacksonville program, given to by Sammy Phillips and Jacksonville City Council. Okay, we also uh, it says here here's now the uh, winning nominee for uh, uh, the Thanksgiving contest. So again, guess what? <laughs> Carrying on in the, their spirit of uh, celebration of the holidays, uh, we'd like to recognize the Roxano family again uh, with this award. Patrick, if you would do the honors. <laughs> Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award, the Clean and Green inaugural a Jacksonville 2015 Thanksgiving Residential Decorating Award is presented to Roberto Santana family. Sorry, guys. For exceptional holiday decorating efforts at their home, and which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville program. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. appreciate the effort. <laughs> did you help? Did you help decorate? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for the effort. That's really nice. Yeah. Feel free, you folks with the with the personal, I come right on up where you get better shots if you like. And now the uh, nominees for the uh, Christmas decorating contest are on the screen. And we'll look at those. Ah. There. Oh, it's two really nice ones there. Yeah. Now, I know that was a hard decision on the part of the nominating or the <laughs> committee. Uh, I want to remind anyone that they can nominate a home during October to December for this award, and we uh, want more entries and more attention to this effort to decorate our homes for the holidays. So the main thing is entering, you know, entering them. Uh, Jessica Edwards and her family are unable to come this evening because Jessica is sick, and we hope that they are watching and that Jessica is well again soon. Uh, now on the screen are some shots of the Edwards' home, which was selected as the winner for the uh, Christmas home decorating contest. It featured a whimsical uh, Christmas that was inspired by the vision of Jessica Edwards who en enlisted her family to undertake this vision for Christmas. And if you would read that award, Patrick. <clears throat> the Clean Green Jacksonville Star Award, the Clean and Green Jacksonville North Carolina uh, 2015 Christmas Residential Decorating Award is presented to Jessica Edwards and family for exceptional Christmas decorating efforts at their home with the benefits, which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville program. If you'll stay up here with me just a moment, Patrick. I was trying to get away. <laughs> trying to escape. I was trying. Um, we want you to. Uh, we want to uh, invite any members of the Environmental and Appearance. Uh, advisory committee that are present tonight. I didn't see anyone other than Patrick, but if you were here, ah, oh, there we go. Thank you for coming. This is a nomination that came from within the Environmental and Appearance Committee. Uh, they wanted to uh, recognize the very special, the special, very, very personal efforts that Patrick Carroll makes to keep uh, Jacksonville clean and green. 
Many afternoons after his work and some mornings when he's not working, Patrick spends his time at Lejeune Memorial Gardens and along the trail from the pedestrian bridge to the entrance to the base. He regularly picks up litter along these areas as part of the adoption of this area by the committee. He is the most faithful member for cleanups of the area. I'm reminded of, this, of a story told by Dr. Woodruff that Patrick came to the city manager's office with a complaint one day after inspecting the trail for trash. He wanted to, to complain that the trail was too clean, that he was unable to find trash to pick up because of the excellent job done by the city parks division members. Patrick had previously lobbied to get trash cans at the train crossing bridge to encourage people to throw away their litter rather than dropping it whereas he reported stuffing it in the fence. His personal work also extends to the stewardship he has demonstrated to the Beirut Memorial. Having served in Beirut with the storied 1st Battalion, 8th Marines, Patrick's mission is personal, care, pers is personal to care for the memorial. He can be found cleaning up the area and even using his blower, trimmers, and other tools he brings to improve the area, uh, appearance of the area. While there, he's an unofficial but informed guide, answering questions about the memorial, telling the story of how this, his, this community built this memorial and about the annual observance. His mission is personal, but the work benefits all. Patrick, on behalf of the City Council, the Environmental Appearance Advisory Committee, and our community, I'm, ask, I'm asking that Council Member Washington, who's not here, present you with this award, so I'm gonna pr present it in her place. Um, and let me read this to you, since you read too, <laughs> some earlier. In grateful recognition of the efforts of Patrick Carroll, who has unselfishly collected litter from Jacksonville Trails, and who without, without assignment or fanfare has volunteered to clean and care for the Beirut Memorial, all of which contributes to the Clean and Green Jacksonville program. Thank you very much, Patrick, for all the work that you do. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming up, to, or you ladies for coming up tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. <clears throat> I want to uh, remind you, any citizen can make a nomination. If you see something that is worthy of a clean and green nomination, particularly for a residential or business appearance, please go online or call us at City Hall or get a nomination in to the commu committee. Uh, and thank you all for, for uh, what you do to enhance the beauty of this city. <clears throat> Next tonight, we're going to call up uh, we're going to call up some young folks here tonight. Tonight we're going to administer the oaths for the new officers of the Jacksonville Youth Council. The Youth Council serves to give youths in Jacksonville a voice. They govern, them, govern themselves, perform public service, and are available to provide connection from the Jacksonville City Council to the youth community. We as the elected officials of the City of Jacksonville welcome your input and suggestions. So this time I would like to ask the following officers, along with their families, if they would come up front and join me. First, we have Christian Kelly. <laughs> Christian is from White Oak High School and is, is going to be the chairman of the Youth Council. That's a big job. Thank you, Christian. Next, I would like to call up Lauren Phillips who will be the vice chairman. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren goes to Jacksonville High School. Go cards, right? Okay. Next, we have Ade, Ade Joan Obe Bobo. Did I, did I do all right with it? Okay. Adi Jawan is going to be the secretary, and Adi Jawan is from Jacksonville High School. All right. I graduated Jacksonville High School. That's why I do that. 
Uh, next, uh, for recorder, the Office of Recorder is going to be Christina Freeman, also from Jacksonville High School. <laughs> the White Oak High School seat, and naturally from White Oak High School, will be Tia Canada. <laughs> Tia. The Jacksonville High School seat, uh, Jacksonville High School, will be Tatiana Manguel. The Northside High School seat will be Faith San Juan. And the easiest name to pronounce, Mr. Chase Tucker, will not be here tonight because he is unable to be here because he's ill. But he will be the at-large seat, and he is at Jacksonville High School, and we'll get him sworn in at another date. So at this time, do we have any families that want to hold Bibles for folks up here? If you will, come on up. All right, if you place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I trust you as my hand. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Consti Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As and state your office. As and state your office. Of, the of the Jacksonville Youth Council. And maintain and uphold. And maintain and uphold. All the laws and regulations. All the laws and regulations. Of the city of Jacksonville. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and good luck on your year in office. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now, if, if we can have all of y'all, parents included, if you will form an arc like this so we can get some photographs. We'll have the uh, young people up front, please. All right, uh, officers of the Youth Council, you got a big year ahead of you, and good luck. <laughs> See, uh, this is going to bring us to a section in the uh, place in the meeting right now where we can take a few minutes. Uh, I know some of you came solely for the presentation tonight, and if you uh, want to leave, this would be a good time to, to go. If you wish to stay, by all means, stay.
Right. Somebody leave that? Number eight. Just wait what comes up. Man. Yeah, we'll just pass over. We we'll get it right out of the public comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be the weather because mine's going, mine's going crazy. Take it off. Okay. My knee feels like my hip. I mean, it's called right. Actually, you told me that. But my hands are hurting me all day. I think the this weather has something get, to do with it. I get it right here for making pizza. Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to go ahead and resume with the meeting, and uh, this brings us to our first section of public comment for this evening. I have one person signed up for the first session, uh, Mr. Dwight Bletcher, if you want to take the podium there. And please state your name and address for the record for the clerk. Please, please come on up. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, and good evening, City Manager. Good evening. I am a United States Marine Wounded Warrior Veteran, and this evening I am addressing you as such. This evening I am speaking on the concerns of the concerns. We, the people, the concerned veterans and citizens of Onslow County, those veterans who retired with an implied expectation that once their honorable service has been complete, that they would be able to have a reasonable, feasible and peaceful way of life. Unfortunately, those veterans have been deceived, lied to, and left the drift to figure it out on their own by the same government in which they have served. While their families and citizens of Onslow County, state of North Carolina, and of the United States of America have endured hardship through deployment, sacrifice, suffering, or worse, the loss of a veteran's life. Is this truly the way our government says thank you for your service after all that we have done? When we, the veterans of those active duty service members, are the ones that put our lives on the line to defend America. Our nation is blessed that the men and women who voluntarily swear an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, are those that display the utmost honor, courage, and commitment. If the price of freedom isn't free, and if the government of the United States of America, the state of North Carolina, and the county of Onslow truly understands that, then why is there a price on a veteran's life and the citizens which makes up our local cities and township communities? Ask yourself, how many more veteran claims must get turned down for entitlements to which they have already properly earned? How many more families must endure financial hardship? How many more families must suffer and go without shelter? How many more families must, sh uh, must suffer and go without a decent meal? How many more dependents must go without health and dinner care? How many more veterans must commit suicide before our government transform words into action? Our government needs to become more proficient in, pro in taking proactive measures and preventing these issues instead of using reactive vices that leads nowhere and end up once again failing the veterans and the concerned citizens yet again. The pursuit of happiness seems far from reality when we are still fighting the struggle for life, liberty, and justice for all here in Nunslow County, here in the state of North Carolina, here in the United States of America. For all veterans and citizens, have we truly forgotten that we are all God's children? I can proudly stand here and tell you right now that Congressman Walter B. Jones has heard the solution to fulfill the obligation of this proclamation. And I can tell you that as of today at 4 o'clock, that solution is now in Washington, D.C. Thank you for your time. God bless each and every one of you. Yes, sir. Second, sir. We have an event coming up. Yes, sir. February 6th at 1 o'clock here in Jacksonville. I'm asking all veterans and citizens to stand beside me as I bring forth the Veterans Proclamation to Onslow County. Where would that be? That will be held at First Baptist Church, 153 Broadhurst Road here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Yes, that is on the same uh, day that our 75th 
uh, Marines will be, or the, the Marine Corps will celebrate its 75th birthday uh, for the Second Marine Division. Uh, that date was already established. I will be attending both events, and I still ask for full support from the entire veteran community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, Councillor, do you have, a, you have a, the consent items and minutes from the January 5th meeting to be considered? Uh, on the consent items, I'd ask that you uh, remove uh, number eight from the agenda uh, due to fa failing to reach an agreement at this time. Non consent. I mean, I'm sorry, did I say consent? Yeah. Okay. Non consent. So, uh, I'll move that we remove item number eight as it's not prepared to go forth. <laughs> The, uh, and to approve uh, the consent. Uh, uh, not, uh, consent items as presented. In the minutes. In the minutes, In the minutes as presented. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that brings us to uh, number four, <coughs> uh, which is a, a public hearing, and this is on for... Bear with me for a moment. This is for a special uh, use permit and site, type three site plan for Freedom Worship Center at 1250 Old Maplehurst Road. Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item, which is a, which is a quasi-judicial action that the council will be taking. You solemnly swear that the evidence you're about to provide is truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Yeah, before you, an item... Agenda item four, a request submitted by Freedom Worship Center of Jacksonville for a special use permit and type three site plan at 1250 Old Maplehurst Road. Notice the vicinity map before you on the screen. This property is zoned RSF 20. And within this zoning district, religious institutions, and in this case, church, require a special use You'll notice that the highlighted project site on the aerial before you uh, it was a former mobile home park, which has since been de has been demolished. Again, this property is zoned RSF 20. Uh, Southwest Middle School is to the east, and this property is zoned RSF 7. There is a church to the north, property zoned RSF 7. Undeveloped property to the south, zoned RSF 20 in area within the Onslow County planning jurisdiction across Mabelhurst Road. The Thank site you. plan is before you on the screen. The planning advisory board heard this at their meet January 11th meeting and have recommended approval with one condition, that submission and approval of a recombination plat prior to the issuance of a building permit. The UDO require, has a parking requirement for churches this site will require one space per 200 square feet of all non-sanctuary areas. The sanctuary is one space per four seats. The site plan identifies 75 parking spaces based on a proposed building, which has 225 seats, which equates to 57 parking spaces. In the other building area, totaling 3,500 square feet, would require 18 for a grand total of 75, which, as I stated, they are proposing. Because the adjacent properties are also zoned residential, there is no additional Type A buffer required by the UDO. However, this property would be subject to a low light pole standard, 16 feet maximum height. They would have to meet our dark sky standard and have a maximum foot candle at the property line of 0.5. Again, the Planning Advisory Board and City staff are recommending approval with findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative and with the condition of a recombination plat being submitted, reviewed, and approved. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Mr. John L. Pierce, representative of the applicant, is here as well. Right, stand by just a moment. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, let's make a notation that prior to him receiving the oath or receiving uh, uh, being sworn to testimony that, that recessed the regular meeting and opened up the public hearing in this matter. So we are act actually in a public hearing mode at this time. Councilor, any questions of uh, Mr. Smith? You say Mr. Pierce is here to speak? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Do you swear that the evidence you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help God? Yes, sir. Yes. Please state Please. your name and address for the record. John please. Pierce, 409 Johnson Boulevard. I'm sorry, 405 I moved. I forgot. 405. <laughs> In the neighborhood. Yeah. Been moved for several years, too. But anyhow, I just want to, I'm here tonight, and, and Ben, uh, there's any questions that the mayor may have or any of the council folks, but if you'd seen the site three years ago and seen the site today and what it will be, it's a vast improvement from what it one time was. I mean, it's really and truly cleaned up, and I think that we meet all the uh, findings of fact as ATG and the affirmative, and I just want to let you know I'm here, and I and we we don't have a problem with prior to getting a building permit doing a recombination. The reason I didn't go ahead and do it, I want to make sure that we certainly got approval, and I'm trying to make sure it is, uh, to do this job as financially feasible as I can for the church. And there again, I'm here to answer any <coughs> questions that the mayor may have or any of the council folks. Right. Council, any questions of Mr. Pierce? Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is a public hearing. Uh, is there anyone else present that wishes to speak regarding this uh, proposed uh, Rezoning and site plan at uh, 1250 Old, I'm sorry, special use per permit and site plan for uh, 1250 Old Maplehurst Road. Is there anyone present wishes to speak to that? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at this time and reconvene the regular city council meeting. Council, you're being asked to uh, approve. I do have a question. All right, Mr. Uh, Bazaar. The um, Maplehurst Road is, is anticipated in the future to potentially become ex an expanded road. Is that something to consider? Uh, the Transportation Division did review this site plan and put Mr. Pierce on notice for that. They work with DOT, and that's why the property is somewhat set off. It's, it's right. taken into account that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Other questions? With that, uh, Councilor, you've been asked to approve the site, the site plan or the per special use permit and the Type 3 site plan. Because, Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the special use permit and, and, the, and also the site, use, site plan with the stipulation that the, the plat be recombined, the two, two lots be combined into one. found affirmative. Yeah, I would have. I would have Our said that. Except missing we didn't. It, yeah. yeah, we didn't. We didn't, we didn't have didn't all the information on this. That, but uh, yes, and the findings of fact A through G be found in the affirmative. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Next. Thank you. Next, we have item uh, five on the agenda for tonight, and. Uh, This is a rezoning from our uh, residential single family seven to uh, office and industrial at 140 Pine and Green Road. Jeremy Smith will be uh, presenting this item. Jeremy. Sure. Aaron, you are correct. This is a rezoning application submitted by the United Pentecostal Church of Jacksonville to request rezoning of their property at 140 Pine and Green Road from RSF seven, residential single family seven, to be rezoned to office and institutional. 09. Notice the vicinity met before you is close to the corner of North Marine Boulevard and Piney Green Road. As you see in the area before you, the property is currently used by the church. Uh, to the north is a gas station, which is zoned co corridor commercial. There's also a car lot nearby that is zoned industrial. To the rear, which is Southwestern of this property is undeveloped property zoned RMF HD. To the south is the Country Club neighborhood zoned single family residential RSF7. Um, they are used for single family dwellings. Across Piney Green Road are two different zonings the North Marine Town Center corridor commercial and a single family residential zoned RMF LD. The Camelan use plan identifies this property as public slash institutional. Therefore, this rezoning request would be in compliance with the Camelan use plan. This is what the property would look like on our maps if rezoned. At its 
December 14th meeting, the planning of, of 2015, the planning advisory board recommended approval of this rezoning request. Members of Parker and Associates, the representatives of the applicant are here to answer any questions that you may have, as well as staff. Again, the planning board, the planning advisory board recommended approval, as well as staff, with findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative, with the rezoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities and making it consistent with the future land use map. What was that again? You said I'm sorry. The last line you said? The, um, the rezoning advances the public interest by creating a more development opportunities and making it consistent with the future land use map. So we should anticipate some development here or? No, no sir. Um, I do not foresee the church, um, but it, right. that was the intent of the Camel Land Use Plan to have it identified as office and institutional. So it would continue to develop the way it is now as a church. Could you explain why there is a need for the rezoning? The church had came in to discuss signage, and it was um, because of the residential zoning, they would be very limited in the size of their sign. So rezoning to office and institutional creates an opportunity for a larger, more visible sign. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Smith? Thank you. Thank you. This time I'm going to recess the regular council meeting and open the uh, required public hearing on this matter. Is anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? If so, please indicate by raising your hand. Yes, sir. If you'll step to the podium. And if you would give your name and address for the clerk to put in the record. I'm John Jackson. I live at 108 Country Club Drive. My wife and I do. We own the house at that address. Uh, the reason that I'm here uh, is because we are very concerned about the effect that zoning, changing it to O and I zoning, would have on our home. Uh, we, you know, we know it will be a very negative effect. We don't really have any problem with the church getting the signage that they want, you know. But there's, if there's some other way, some other vehicle that they could have what they want, we would we would uh, really appreciate that, and and we would want them to have that. But at the same, you know, at the same time, churches don't always own property. They don't. They're not always there. So if if something were to happen to the church, we're going to be faced with O, o and I zoning right there behind our home. So you know, we would like for you to uh, consider it uh, and possibly table this to that could be discussed uh, among the, the city people. Uh, and, and I was a little bit concerned, too, that we did not get this notice until uh, it was written on the 7th. And usually, I, I understand it's usually 10 to 20 days before the notice comes out uh, that, that the hearing is. So we haven't, we haven't had the 10 days you know, that, that we have. So if you consider uh, changing that uh, or tabling this, well, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else present wishes to speak to this action? Yes, sir. If you would come up, please give your name and address for the clerk. My name is Matthew Drake, and my address is 747 Radiant Drive, Jacksonville, North Carolina, 28546. I would speak on behalf of the church, um, associate pastor. I'm the one who, uh, on behalf of the lead pastor, Kevin Wallace, and myself, uh, and our church board, submitted the application. Um, th the intent behind this is, as was stated by city office, um, our church sign was removed by Department of um, Transportation in the expansion. So what we're really trying to do is replace a sign that's been there for uh, quite a long time. Um, with current regulations, a residential sign, uh, quite frankly, wouldn't do a, a church justice. So uh, we've sought to have uh, rezoning. And as the gentleman uh, previously stated, our church has been there for 30-some years. We're not looking to do anything different. 
uh, just replace the size of sign that, uh, that was taken down by Department of Transportation. Of course, we'll, we'll spend some money and we'll make it a nice sign. It will we'll improve the area. We've made arrangements with uh, Department of Transportation. We've cleaned up the side area, the property that uh, Department of Transportation acquired right next to the road. We've maintained that. Uh, our intent is to improve the area and make it uh, look nicely. Any questions? Yeah, real quick question, Mr. Drake. Um, your your access to that property is is off of Piney Green Road. Yes. Is that the only access? Two two accesses on uh, Piney Green Road. Any questions? I have a question for Jeremy. Okay, thank you, Mr. Drake. Jeremy, um, our land use is showing mixed use. Our zoning map. The uh, um, existing, the well, future. I'm sorry. Yeah, the future land use. What is that? The land use identifies the, pro the property as public or slash institutional. It's mixed use across Piney yeah. Green. My question is, is um, with it being four lane and a commercial corridor, is that still going to maintain? The mixed use identification? Mm -hmm. I really can't say just because we have not updated the camera. It's a due for an update. With Obviously, them. Piney Green is going to be a major retail corridor. I agree. Uh, so, as discussed, you know, possible plans to do a small area study for Piney Green, at, you know, with the widening project. Obviously, um, we have not gotten that far, but I agree. I mean, with the widening of Piney Green, these the developments along it, uh, I would foresee commercial or some more intense uses than what are there, what is there now. Right. So, in your opinion, is this the right zoning to do here? Or? That's, that's what my question yeah. is. I believe so. One, the camera supports it. It has a historical um, status as a church and will continue moving forward. But as uh, Councilman Lazara has stated, that with the widening of Piney Green Road, I believe the city will see more recombining of some of these smaller parcels and a more intense development along this corridor. Right, and the reason I bring it up, Mayor, is the, the gentleman that spoke earlier as a, as a resident, uh, that's going to be a future, that's going to be a future issue for some of the residents that, that adjoin that, that major thoroughfare, because I see that as a future retail center that is going to happen. So I think we need to look at, you know, how is that future land use going to exist and coexist with Correct. residential parcels? But to, if I, if I can, ahead. when we put together the uh, future land use or the camel land use plan, at that particular time, uh, the <clears throat> property across the street from the subject property was in one ownership, but was in the process of being developed with multiple players. Part of the concept plan there was a large apartment complex. So instead of being all commercial corridor, since we didn't know exactly which piece of property was going to be multiple family and which piece was going to be a commercial, our thought at that time was mixed use. That way it could allow a combination of multiple family and or commercial development. What we do know is that that commercial development is proceeding. We have looked at four or five site plans that will bring, as soon as Piney Green is finished, that will bring commercial development, especially along the 17 frontage. What we also know is that the multiple family project is no longer viable, and it has been withdrawn by the developer. I think you're correct that as we come to the next round of updating the CAMA plan, this is a corner that the staff needs to look closely at. I think the other uh, thought is, as you look at the future transportation system, there is the concept that commerce, which currently comes across Western, and it comes up to, uh, if we can switch back to the parcel that shows undeveloped, uh, I'm not sure which map that is. You can see at the bottom there, undeveloped RMF, HD. Country Club, I'm sorry, Commerce doesn't come up to that point yet. But in the master transportation plan, there is the concept, doesn't mean it will become a reality, but there is the concept 
that that road will cross and go across Piney Green and connect to the road system that is being built as part of that commercial development. Uh, that will have an impact on that neighborhood. Whether it will impact the homes that currently face on Country Club, I do not know because the final alignment hasn't been there. But what we do know is that this neighborhood is going to be changing, whether that's good or bad, everyone has an opinion, but this neighborhood is going to be changing based upon the completion of Piney Green Road and the eventual extension of commerce so it connects into the new development property. Well, nevertheless, it's something I think we need to look at. We certainly don't need to prohibit the church from having a sign. I think that's ridiculous, but well, we that's can find the right solution. Well, changing the zoning seems like the overkill, plus if we ever are or the state is going to extend Commerce Drive, the rezoning of that property is probably going to make it more expensive to acquire, I would think. Isn't there some means to accommodate the church's desire for an adequate sign for their for their property without this rezoning? Are we so are we so bound by our sign regulations we can't give a variance? Let me get a question. If the sign had been destroyed through no fault of the property owners, the church in this instance, um, car accident, fire, would it be um, permissible? Would they be allowed to replace it? under the existing zone. Ryan, you want to answer that first? Residential zoning districts allow signs up to 32 square feet. So monument style signs, 32 square feet. The church wants to modernize the sign and put up an electronic message board at a much larger size than 32 square feet. That's the reason why they have sought the rezoning because they want to modernize the sign and go larger because they are on a, court, a commercial corridor. So we do allow JT Kerr, um, any school in a residential zone, because most of them are, churches are in residential zones, they're allowed signs. They're just limited at 32 square feet. The you sign at, that you they had the, before, what size was it? I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't even know that the sign had been removed, but I mean, I'm, they said I'm it not sure. It was a sure. large sign. It, it was larger than the 32 square feet. Okay, so I'm just asking what provisions would there be in the instances that I gave for a sign to be replaced? that was similar to the sign that was there. Okay. With DOT, what we have done is that the, basically the, the owners have two options. If DOT elects to relocate their sign on the site, then we allow them to back it up on the site. If DOT buys the sign, gives them full value for the signage, then whatever sign they come back in with has to meet current standards. So, I mean, we've had people do it both ways up and down Piney Green Road. This isn't the first time we've dealt with signage since the roadway projects have gone on. But you know, you could also look at somewhere like a Northwoods Park Middle School in the middle of North, uh, middle Northwoods. You know, 150 square foot sign with an electronic message board. I mean, it's not something that we've seen, but that's why the residential has a lower amount of signage and less lighting than say on the co commercial corridor. But that's something that we could certainly look at with the sign committee if that's something that council decides that they would like to see us move forward with. If there's, understand the, the dual purpose here, if the church is interested in signage and the council is comfortable with signage being the issue but is uncomfortable with rezoning being the issue, then what I'd recommend you do is that you table this at this point and that you direct the staff to work with the city attorney to bring back to you any options that we can find. I would also suggest, and of course the church may disagree, uh, while time may not be of the essence from my standpoint, because I think most people know where the church is and they're going to be there this coming Sunday, whether the sign is up by Sunday or not, uh, we will certainly look and bring you back options. I think the real question is, uh, are you comfortable with the rezoning? Because the gentleman who spoke from the single family home is correct. Rezoning carries with it a series of uses. And while the church has been there for a number of years, rezoning would give them the ability to sell that property at any time they want. We cannot restrict the use to only a church. So if your concern is about the signage, we can work to see if we can find some options. 
if your concern is about the rezoning of the property because it could convert from a church to something else, then that's a different concern. I'm concerned about the rezoning, and I would move the table and then direct the staff to come back to us with recommendations for alternatives. Second. No motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> so we leave the uh, public hearing open on this, yes, Mr. Attorney? Okay. Uh, sure open. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yes, Next, and, uh, and Mayor, we'll give Mr. Jackson notice of when it's recalendered. Uh, yes, we'll let you know. That's right. We'll let you know since you're an interested <coughs> party when it will be recalendered for come before council again. Right. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have item number six. This is a public hearing on annexation of lands owned by the municipality. It's the lands donated to the city of Jacksonville by uh, Ken Witcher. It's 2.43 acres, and Mr. Massey will be presenting this item. Mayor huh? Council, this is a voluntary annexation process for city-owned property that is contiguous to the city limits. Property is two tracks totaling 2.43 acres at the corner of Western Boulevard and Gateway North adjacent to the city property at the Commons. Council accepted the donation of these tracks from Ken Wichard at the September 8, 2015 council meeting with no conditions or obligations associated with the donation. Property is currently located in the extraterritorial jurisdiction. There are no development plans for property at this time, therefore is no financial impact associated with this annexation. Staff recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Any questions of Mr. Massey? We'll get a map. Don't know for sure whether there's there's one in your packet, sir. It's it's the property that's right across the street from. I, I know where it's at, but I want to see where, how far up it goes. There's no map in the package. Does it abut the present city property? Yes, sir. It goes up to the up to the city property, uh, to the north, and then it and it goes it touches the city property on the west, which is where the city property actually touches Western Boulevard. Does it abut McCray's property? No, sir. So, no, sir. No? The, the city property butts McCray's property. The, the city property, there is a city property between McCray and this tract. Okay. This is mostly wetlands, is that, is that correct? Was this it's an area of a deep ravine. Yes, sir. Western and, and Gateway North. Okay. Right at that corner, just opposite corner from where the Verizon store is being built, opposite the across side. the street. There you go. Uh, yeah. <coughs> the properties here touches uh, western <laughs> to the north and wraps around. It's all city property around the Witcher tract. Any, any other questions of Mr. Massey? Thanks, for, thanks, Ron. This time I'll recess the regular council meeting and open a public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this matter on this annexation? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. And, uh, Councilor, you've been asked to consider the annexation ordinance. Uh, Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to adopt the annexation ordinance. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Here, none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Number seven in your agenda packet for tonight is a UDO uh, text amendment. Um, Article 2, Administration, Section 2.3N, Development Agreement. And Ryan King, our planning and permitting administrator, will be uh, presenting this item. Ryan. Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, back in October, uh, the House Bill 44 um, became law. As a result, we are doing some housekeeping items with uh, 
revising our UDO so that our UDO does not conflict with what the North Carolina General Statutes allow. So before you tonight, we are requesting uh, changes to Article 2.3 in development agreements. And there's five highlights. Um, let's see. There. There's five highlights that um, are identified on, on your second page of this agenda item. And it basically eliminates the minimum acreage a site must be in order to enter into a development agreement. Uh, it eliminates specific value that the development must um, contain. It requires modifications that we share those modifications, minor modifications with mayor and council. It basically says, you know, if we approve one of those modifications, we'll let the mayor and council know. Um, basically, it eliminates the um, information pertaining to approval of debt, and it also eliminates the assumption of jurisdiction over other development agreements. Uh, the planning board back in December recommended approval of this UDO zoning, I'm the, sorry, the UDO text amendment, and uh, staff does as well just so that it doesn't conflict with those general statutes. Any questions of Mr. King? Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. At this time, I'll recess the regular council meeting and open up public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing, reconvene the regular council meeting. Councilor, you're being asked to consider the zoning text amendment. Or the, I'm sorry, the UDO amendment. So moved. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Item carries. Next, we're going to jump all the way down to number nine. And this is uh, this is the NCDOT agreement for landscaping enhancements along Jacksonville Parkway and West Huff Drive. And uh, Mr. Massey will be presenting this item tonight. Mayor and Council, to promote clean and green, staff has been working with NCDOT to plan, design, and fund landscaping enhancements for several high volume roadway corridors. This project involves installation of landscaping along the length of Jacksonville Parkway from the interchange on North Marine Boulevard to its termination at Western and Gateway North and also West Huff Drive. The landscaping will be installed by the city through a contractual services agreement with NCDOT reimbursing for the cost not to exceed $365,273. The city will be responsible for long-term maintenance of landscaping enhancements. Staff recommends that council approve the NCDOT agreement, budget amendment, and CIP amendment as presented. So specifically, there'll be landscaping added right there at the interchange in the green circle uh, where Jacksonville Parkway and uh, uh, North Marine Boulevard intersect. And then in the area between that interchange and Gateway North at Western, there'll be landscaping installed there. In addition, we have, uh, there's, there's the interchange where the uh, <coughs> landscaping will be in, installed in that area. And then West Huff Drive will be landscaping in the medians along West Huff Drive. Are there any questions? Any questions of Mr. Massey, Mr. Ward? Does the, uh, the landscaping plan take into consideration the possible addition of that on-ramp coming from 17 yes, North? Yes, sir. The, the, not all the quadrants around the interchange okay. will actually have landscaping installed in it. Okay. Yes, sir. Other questions? Are we talking about high maintenance landscaping or shrubs? No, but mainly shrubs, and that, and, and the intention is it'll reduce some of the Mowing. areas that we mow. Yes, sir. Will this be contract work or workforce account? It, it has to be contract work because of the dollar value. This this is a money that basically gets set aside with every major project. DOT has a set aside for landscaping, and unfortunately, when to use that money, you basically are pretty much boxed into the land or to contracting the service. 
Yeah, the, the landscaping will be uniform, though, in that it will be a combination of crepe myrtles and understory bu uh, bushes such as nandinas. We're trying to set up an easy maintenance pattern so that you have one look, but also where you have easy maintenance. As Ron said, the unfortunate thing is that if the money could be turned over directly to the city, we could get nearly twice as much landscaping in there. I mean, even so, we're spending how much money? $366,000. But because of the way that the DOT and the federal money requires it to be bid, you know, you're, you're going to get landscaping, and it will be quality landscaping. It just won't be to the level of landscaping that your own crews could have done. Why is that? Your own crews, we're already paying for the labor. So all of the money could go to materials. But because we are required to bid it, then we are required to pay someone else for the labor and the material. We have, we have a landscaping design for that entire section of Jacksonville Parkway and the interchange and West Huff. We will probably bid some of it as add alternates uh, to see you know, what we can get for the entire $366,000. What we unable to, uh, you know, get in place with the 366, we'll come back to council and talk about doing the rest of it with in-house labor. But right now, we'll get as much as we can for 366, 366,000. Any other questions of Mr. Massey? I think Mr. Thomas can help that project out. Some volunteer work. We're being asked to consider the NCDOT agreement, budget amendment, and the uh, CIP amend amendment. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? And that brings us to. Our last section of public comment for the evening, I have one person signed up, Mr. David Williams. If you will, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, yes, David Williams, 109 Shadowbrook Drive, Jacksonville, North Carolina, and thank you for letting me speak. I noticed that at one of your workshops recently on G10, you talked about the lack of diversity in your workforce in certain positions. I give you all a lot of credit for talking about that in public. But one of your questions that came up is why do so, uh, a possible why so few minor minorities apply or try? Well, here's some of what I've run into. A couple of Christmases ago, the Onslow County School System uh, did a film and introduced all their top people down at the central office and put it on G10. It was a good film. And my daughter watched it with me, and at the end of it, we talked about it. I said, what stands out to you about this film? Talk to me. And we talked about a few things. She said, well, there appears to be only one minority in charge of anything, and everybody else is white. And she was a teenager. Recently, I've been going to some of these uh, Onslow County Sheriff's meetings they've been having around the county. Been very good meetings. I give the sheriff a lot of credit for them. At the first one, I noticed when he introduced all of his officers, they all appeared to be white. At the second meeting, I was going to bring it up to him and ask him about that. It was up in Hubert, and I decided to do it after the meeting. But after the meeting, I went up there, and another citizen approached me. And as we stood there waiting to talk to him, the other citizen asked me, what did you notice about all of his officers that night? And I said, again, they all appear to be whites. And he said, exactly. And he was African-American, and he was an older citizen, and he thought maybe he was the only one seeing that. So... Um, back to the school system, I brought that to their attention after my daughter and I had talked about it in one of their meetings, and I've yet to see them to talk about it publicly. And I also brought it up again this past November to them, and yet again I have yet to see them talk about it publicly. So I guess they're happy with what they have. They think there's nothing wrong. I've also contacted the uh, Daily News, Channel 12 and Channel 9 over the past year to Maybe you could see if they could ask our elected officials about, you know, this situation. If they have done a story on it, I haven't seen it. So if they haven't done a story on it, they must all think there's nothing wrong out there and everything's going fine. So this brings me back to the possible why so few minorities may apply. 
What does a young minority have to look forward to here, not just in Jacksonville, yet in a lot of areas in Oslo County? Meaning, if the odds appear to be against you at, a top, at the top positions in government, why would you put your time in here to grow? That be in Jacksonville and Onslow County. This is bigger than just Jacksonville. And there's some more examples I could give you. The time's run out. But uh, maybe you can include the other government in there, if not as council people, as private citizens. Thank you. All right. I know that uh, may have been someone come in after the... Uh, Sign-up sheet for public comment was picked up. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at public comment? Yes, please, if you would come forward. Ma'am, if you would, please state your name and address for the clerk to record. Thank you so much. My name is Leah Turner. My address is 212 Savoy Lane, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, uh, esteemed council members, Mr. Mayor, county manager, um, deputy city manager, or city manager, I'm sorry. Um, I, I've been really working hard to get an initiative through uh, to get a, an interest in a YMCA here in Jacksonville. Um, I, I don't know where we're at. I know that there's not enough funds for it right now in the city, in the city budget, and I understand that. But I, I ask that you please consider this for this community. Um, it's, it's more than just a pool, the programming, and this is just such a great dynamic community. I feel like it's, it's more than just a pool. It's the programs that come in with that organization. It is the, it's the sense of community that develops when you have that type of place where everyone in the community feels kind of it levels the playing field both on, on either side of the gate. And um, I think it really benefits the City Parks and Rec to kind of coordinate and collaborate with nonprofits like YMCA to make this community more dynamic, um, to capitalize on the special nature of our community, and to really promote what is so good, so really, really good about Onslow County and Jacksonville. And I just ask you to please consider to try and work to develop a plan to really promote within um, the city of Jacksonville and Onslow County. I know you guys work very well together, and I just ask that you kind of work to consider how to get that initiative to bring everybody to the table to get to work to bring something really dynamic and special for Onslow County and Jacksonville. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you very Thank much. You, Anyone else? All right, so now we're going to go to the report section. I'm going to start with down at the right down here with Mr. Willingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had the opportunity to attend the Muffin Point Marine Association Martin Luther King Black and White Scholarship Ball. It was a wonderful evening, and they do so much to contribute to this community through scholarships. They're building a wonderful, uh, awesome monument at the Memorial Gardens, and I'm really looking forward to their um, um, finishing that and having their ceremony. I just wanted to mention, it was mentioned uh, earlier about the 2nd Marine uh, Division having its 75th anniversary, the anniversary of Camp Lejeune, actually on February 6th at 10, uh, 1000. The, uh, it's gonna be a military parade that starts from Camp Johnson and ends in Riverwalk Crossing. So um, my understanding is that uh, rain or shine, I think the city manager says the Marine Corps has foul weather gear, so we need to get our, <laughs> our cold weather gear if that's uh, needed. So I hope that we get a good attendance for that. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. William. Mr. Bittner. On Wasa met last week and um, annual election of officers, uh, chairman was Elected as Mr. Greg Hines from Holly Ridge, Vice Chair W.C. Jarman from County Commissioners, Secretary Barbara Eichner, County Commissioner. We also received a report that the Northwest Trunk Line from Burton Park to the Northwest 
new treatment plant has been completed. And with that, I don't know whether the city received notification that Onslow County will now terminate its agreement with the city for treatment of leachate from the county's landfill, and that will be turned over to Onwasa. Oh, we also welcome two new members from Swansboro and um, Topsail, whose names I temporarily escape me. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Bittner. Mayor Pro Tem was all. No report, Mayor. Mr. Thomas. Uh, no report, thank you. Mr. Warden. Proud to be here, sir. Thank you. Proud to have you here. Uh, Dr. Woodward. Uh, Mr. Council, a couple of quick items. As uh, Mr. Willingham mentioned, we do have the parade. We want to mention to the public that we're going to be setting up off-site parking facilities. These will be advertised and we'll be providing free bus rides from those off-site facilities. The parade is not going to be on Western. I want to repeat that again. The parade is not going to be on Western. It's going to be right here in front of City Hall on New Bridge Street. We are going to have a phenomenal opportunity to see the Marine Corps as they celebrate this birthday. They're going to be moving pieces of equipment as well as the marching troops. They're also going to be static displays. And we truly hope that the public will come out regardless of rain or shine or snow or sleet or sunshine because this is a celebration that represents what this community is about and why we exist. So we hope everybody will come out, as stated, as stated Saturday, February the 6th at 1000. Mr. Massey, you want to give any other updates? You and Glenn have been working on the committee for this. No, sir. We just, we just want to encourage everybody to come down and help us celebrate. Absolutely. Two other matters. Uh, recently, uh, the City Council approved a, a grant opportunity to also community outreach relative to installing uh, fire sprinkler systems and other improvements uh, at the building which they purchased on Hargett. I'm pleased to tell you that that project is moving along well. They have received competitive bids. They're in the process of analyzing those bids. It's our anticipation that we'll be notified by Onzo Community Outreach that they will be installing that sprinkler system very shortly. Uh, our understanding is they expect it to be completed by mid-April. The last thing that we would like to mention again is to the public, uh, today is Tuesday. We did not collect garbage yesterday, so if your normal garbage day is Tuesday and your wife put the can out and you wonder why it's still full, it's because tomorrow, just leave it out, and we will pick it up tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Thursday service is normal. Friday service is normal. No horticultural pickup this week. As always, Mayor and Council, we thank you for your leadership and what you do for this community. Mr. Carter? Another report, Mayor. Thank you. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Meet. With the exception.